It is my pleasure to welcome you all here today at our Holocaust Memorial in Buttonwood Park to honor the memory of the six million Jews and five million other victims who died from Nazi brutality during World War II. Today, too, we remember the survivors who are no longer with us, and also Mr. James Wilcox, the co-chair of our Holocaust Education Committee, who dedicated his life to the teaching of world genocide. Tonight's program is in Jim's memory. This monument, dedicated in 1998, was the dream of Abraham Landau, a survivor of 13 camps, whose book was published last year. On the monument are the names of many of the camps and also the number that Mr. Landau was branded with in Auschwitz. The monument is a symbol for school children and the community to remember and to reflect on the past to make sure that such horrors will never happen again. This year's theme, The Problem of Evil, Choices Matter, reflect the choices that survivors had to make in the camps that hidden children had to make separating themselves from their parents and their choices that our own soldiers had to make. We observe Yom HaShoah today, April 29, 2012, 67 years after the liberation of Dachau on April 29, 1945. It was a Sunday that year too when the 7th Army, the 42nd Rainbow Division, and the 45th Thunderbird Division liberated Dachau. Approximately 32,000 prisoners were freed then. Several of the American soldiers who were there that day were those who came from New Bedford. These heroes among us, Nate Barry, Norman Chartier, Eli Heimberg, Walter Lalor, and John Kinney were in Dachau to free the prisoners and they also saw firsthand the true horrors of Nazi brutality. Today, World War II is now history, but it is important for us to remember each year, to reflect and to say, never again. The mayor of New Bedford, Jonathan Mitchell, remembers one of these heroes because John Kinney, his grandfather, was one of the liberators of Dachau. I am pleased to present to you the Honorable Mayor of New Bedford, Jonathan Mitchell. No mic. I'm just so used to walking up to the microphone and fixing it to my height. Um, Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm pleased and I'm honored to be here today as your mayor to uh, remember those who were lost in the Holocaust, especially the, those from the Jewish community who suffered by far the most and were, who were vilified by far the most. As Cynthia mentioned, my grandfather played a role in the liberation of Dachau, which we also commemorate today, 67 years later. Um, my grandfather was a young lieutenant who served in the 414th Artillery Battalion, the 20th Armored Division, United States 7th Army. Uh, his job basically was to spot enemy targets and direct artillery fire to places. On April 29th, he entered Dachau. My grandfather wasn't a wilting violet. Um, he, um, <clears throat> my grandfather lost his father uh, a New Bedford police officer in the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918. Um, he lived part of his childhood in St. Mary's home. Uh, and during the war, he survived three plane crashes. Uh, I saw the man cry once in my entire life. He passed away three years ago. I saw him cry once, and that was when he told me what he saw at Dachau. Um, the images were seared onto his brain. Uh, in, in ways that he could barely articulate. Uh, bulldozers pushing piles of bodies into large pits. People who were barely alive starving right before the American troops' eyes. And guards who were shot on the spot by many, many American troops looking for some justice on the spot. 
my grandfather couldn't articulate well what happened there and didn't speak to me, uh, me or anyone else as far as I knew, I, I know, uh, after he, he told me what he saw some 30 years ago now. Um, and for reasons that I think we're familiar with, if not firsthand, but at least secondhand, at least in, in a more abstract level. And that's because what he saw there was hard, was beyond the reach of really any rational thought. Hard for people who live in a society like ours to understand how in, inhumane others could be to other human beings. The reality is that in what, in what he found difficult to believe and what many others in the years that followed find difficult to comprehend was that a society that produced Goethe and Beethoven and Mozart could all create the, the inhumanity of Dachau and Treblinka and Auschwitz and others. So it's left to us to recognize that this can happen anywhere at any time and recognize that even though we live in tranquil, relatively tranquil times and peaceful times and stable times, things can unravel. Look what happened to Sarajevo just in the last 20 years. A major European city that hosted the Olympic Games and then within 10 years was in the middle of a civil war. Things can happen, things can deteriorate rapidly. I think Primo Levi said it best, um, someone who experienced the horrors of, the, of, um, of concentration camps and the Holocaust firsthand. He said a civilized a society is characterized as more civilized when the wisdom of its laws prevent weak people from becoming more weak and powerful people from becoming more powerful. And that requires openness. That requires a society that values diversity, that values tolerance, that values the fact that other people might have a better answer than you do. And so we, we here in New Bedford, I think, have acquitted ourselves well over time as, as a place where people mesh well together, where we listen to our neighbors, where we join hands in times of struggle. Let's continue, let's continue with that vision. Let's, let's resolve here today that we will, we will mark our time on this planet as people who looked out for others regardless of their creed, regardless of their background. And in that way, we will, we will honor those who are lost and we will leave a better future for our children. Thank you very much. Oh. I'm sorry, I forgot the formal part of my, my speech and that's, that's to commemorate today by proclamation of the city of New Bedford. I won't read the whole thing. Let me, uh, let me read the pertinent part. The days of remembrance that we honor today have been set aside for the people of the city of New Bedford to remember the victims of the Holocaust as well as to reflect on the need for respect of all peoples. And pursuant to the Act of Congress, the United States Holocaust Memorial Council designates the days of remembrance of the victims of the Holocaust to be Sunday, April 29th through Sunday, May 5th, 2012. Now I therefore, as the mayor of the city of New Bedford, do hereby proclaim the week of Sunday, April 29th through Sunday, May 5th as days of remembrance in memory of the victims of the Holocaust in honor of the survivors as well as the rescuers and liberators and further proclaim that we, as the citizens of the city of New Bedford, should work to promote human dignity and confront hate whenever and wherever it occurs. Thank you. Shanish Rufu, the 
Shenik Baruchayim Al Kiddush Hashem Bidei Hamratzim Hagermanim Yehuzreham Mishar Ha'amim Baal Harachamim Yastireim Besetek Anafav Li'olamim Yitzroi b'tzor ha'chayim et nishmoteham V'gan eiden te'heim menuchatam V'yakumu l'keitze amin l'chayotam Everybody please say with me, Amen. Amen. Rabbi Barry Hartman was uh, supposed to uh, make remarks at this time and lead us in the Mourner's Kaddish. Uh, unfortunately, he had to attend to a funeral uh, out of town and therefore could not be here tonight and uh, obviously, regrettably, cannot join us. I'm going to ask that you turn to page four. In just a moment, we're going to do the Mourner's Kaddish. But first, uh, a few remarks of my own, if I might. The words of the prophet Joel. Hehayta zot biyamechem v'im biyamei avotechem aleha livnechem saperu uvnechem livnechem uvnechem ledor acher. Has the like of this happened in your days, says the prophet, or in the days of your fathers? Tell your children about it, and let your children tell theirs and their children the next generation. We are here not only to remember, but to speak. Let us, as President Obama has charged us to tell our children about a crime unique in human history. The Holocaust, six million innocent people, men, women, children, babies, sent to their deaths just for being different, for being Jewish. We must tell them, our children, about the millions of Poles Catholics and Roma and gay people and so many others who also must never be forgotten. We shall tell our children not only how they died but how they lived as fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters who loved and hoped and dreamed just like each one of us. We must tell our children about how this evil was allowed to happen because so many people succumbed to their darkest inclinations and because so many others stood silent. We will tell our children and we'll, we will teach them that remembrance without resolve is a gesture without meaning. Awareness without action changes. Never again is a challenge to us all to pause, to look within, let us make never again a challenge to reject hatred in all its forms, including anti-Semitism. Let us make never again a slogan that is real. Amen. And the, please join with me, the Mourner's Kaddish. It's also in transliteration on the page. We'll go straight through uh, on the other, yes, so in the Aramaic. Yit gadal v'yikada shemei rabah Bialma divra chirute, Viamlech machute, Bechaye chon of Yomechon, Ufhaye de Hobe Israel, Bagala vizman kariv, Vimru Amen, Yehe shme raba mevorach liolam, Olme olmaya, Yit barach, Vishtabach, Vipa ar, Vitromam, Vietna se. Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Halal, Shme de Kucha, Brichu, Leela Minkol, Berhata, Vishirata, Tush Behata, Venechamata, Damiran Bialma, Vimru, Amen, Yehe Shlam Maraba, Min Shemaya, Vechayim Alenu, Vialkol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen, Ose Shalom Bimramav, Hu ya se shalom. Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. May the one who brings peace to the heavens bring peace here on earth to all humanity. And let us say, Amen.
Good evening. We are all gathered here tonight, so very close to Buttonwood Brook. And when we think that the um, peoples who lived here before us, the Wampanoags, used to walk up and down Buttonwood Brook. And now as we go around tonight on our candlelit procession, we will cross over the part where Buttonwood Brook now, for the sake of our, our um, comfort, is going underground. And it reminded me um, th to think of the Wampanoags that were there then and are not here now, about how um, in this country, too, we had people that were um, ex uh, exterminated. You know that in the definitive biography of Adolf Hitler by John Toland in 1976, it tells how much um, Adolf Hitler admired President Andrew Jackson for the way that he was handling pushing the um, natives from the East Coast across um, our country. And he mentioned specifically three ways that um, Adolf Hitler admired the Americans for the, um, quote, you would say, Native American solution. And one of those was that once um, the natives were on reservations, they were all given numbers. And I stand below, below an arm that has Abe's number on it. And Adolf Hitler knew that all the uh, natives were given numbers so that they would, people would forget their names. And then he thought that, um, that this idea of reservations, of course he called them now concentration camps, was a good idea. And that starvation was a very inexpensive way to take care of um, exterminating so many natives. And we know how much starvation took place in the camps. So that as we um, get together today, we have to remember um, what else uh, influenced Adolf Hitler in his, in his whole um, t t horrific activities. And the reason I bring this up is because we dedicate this service tonight to um, Jim Wilcox, who has uh, been a guiding light in this committee for so long. And when I told him that I was trying to study more about the Native Americans here in the greater New Bedford area, he said to me, not only did he know about the Holocaust, but that he also knew about Native Americans and he would be glad to help me study that any time that I asked him to. And so I thought I would mention that tonight uh, in, in some of the ways that we're paying tribute to him, that this was also another um, area of generosity that he would reach out and offer to help me. And of course, we all know that he didn't have an opportunity to do that, but I still want to say thank you to, to him and his family for offering that tonight. And so tonight we um, dedicate our candlelight procession to Jim Wilcox and also our 12 candles in remembrance of the 6 million Jews and 5 million other victims, including physically and mentally handicapped, persecuted clergy, Roma, that is the gypsies, Jehovah's Witnesses, homosexuals, political dissidents, and all victims of past genocides of the 20th century. So I'm going to ask tonight um, the Reverend Bertolyn Watson to come and help me and ask all of the students who are going to lead our procession to come up and receive their candles.
looks great on you. Oh my gosh, guys, I totally forgot to tell you. I like broke up with Jeff. <gasps> no way. Why? Because I was like at his house the other day and he totally threw his water bottle in his paper recycling bin. Ugh, ew. That's so gross. I know, right? And I've told him like a million times. It's so easy. It's just cardboard and paper in one and plastic, cans, metal, glass, and bottles in the other. But he just wouldn't listen, so I had to kick him to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> you go, girl. Call Marissa at 508-979. 1493 to request your free recycling bins. This message was brought to you by the City of New Bedford and UMass Dartmouth Charlton School of Business.